previously. Woo! Officially finished the gib, guys. Yay! We made it, caught and carried it. <laughs> we found epic water holes, drove kilometers of dirt, tried to catch a barra, and see the iconic gib spots. Once again, the dirt began, so the tyre pressures were dropped. It's approximately 200 kilometres to get from Broome to the top of Cape Levique. The top half is sealed, and they have begun work to seal the bottom half when we drove up. The corrugations weren't too bad on the drive up. We made good time, arriving at Gumbana Campground just after lunch. We found a great spot right near the designated fishing spot and once set up, Kurt was straight out there with his rod. The next day, we drove just down the road to visit Signet Bay Pearl Farm. We had heard there was free activities on all weekend and decided to check them out. On the day of our visit, there just so happened to be doing a live pearl harvest. How cool to see, and even better, it was free. Jay. <gasps> Can everyone see that coming through there, that shiny part? I had no idea that if there was going to be a pearl in here today. I did not x-ray it. I'd... Yeah, so everyone believes me, I didn't put this in here. It's been there for two years, yeah? sunrise. Once the sun was up and out, we both relaxed around camp for the morning before heading out to One Arm Point. One Arm Point is an indigenous community right up the top of Cape Levique. We popped into the general store for a look before heading out to the hatchery, an open air aquarium run by a local volunteer. Our tour guide gave us a very informative tour about the place, what they do and how it is helping the community. Almost lost some fingers feeding this guy. <laughs> After our tour, we decided to check out the local beaches. There was plenty of these huts scattered along the foreshore. We parked up and jumped in for a dip. You do have to be wary of crocodiles, but it's ridiculously clear, so you can keep a good eye out. Mm. Mm. The 
next day we drove up to Kuljaman. We grabbed a vehicle permit and headed straight to the beach. It is a long sandy entrance onto the eastern beach, so be sure to deflate your tyres if needed. Just at Kuljiman Beach up at Cape Levique. Uh, me and Rusty are just chilling and uh, here with Kurt's parents. The boys are out having a fish, but check out this beach. So, yeah, it's awesome. It's uh, $35 for a car permit and two people for the day to drive on the beach, which is not too bad. Um, dogs aren't allowed up at the resort. But they're allowed on the beach, so yeah, no complaints here. Rusty's had a swim this morning. Rusty! So she's all wet and we'll probably um, we'll go in for another one soon. But yeah, looks like the boys might be catching something, so we'll go have a look, eh? We know what you're thinking. $35 to drive on a beach. Yes, but Kuljamin is one of the most popular spots to see up here. And we decided to see it once, then hear about it a thousand times. We were getting bites, but just couldn't hook up anything as of yet. I cooked up some burgers for the troops before having another refreshing swim. Ta-da! I hooked a garfish. We packed up the awnings and headed back up the sandy track en route to check out the western beach. The western beach is quite a contrast different to the eastern side of Kuljaman, with bright red sandy cliffs. Kurt decided to have a quick flick and after five minutes he landed a fish. You oh, <laughs> finally a decent fish, Trevelli. After a short stroll up the beach, it was time to head back to camp. Kuljaman, you are pretty. Ames prepared the fish for dinner while I got the fire going. Next morning we headed back to Signet Bay for a morning out on the water. My mum had won four free tickets to the Waterfall Reef Tour, which she won from the festivities at Signet Bay a few days earlier. We jumped in the Sea Legs boat, which transferred us out to our touring boat.
After a quick safety briefing, we were off and flying. We went and saw the pearl harvesters at work. Our guide talked about the local island, how they came to find pearls, and why they chose up here to start their farm. We saw whirlpools in the water, which were from the strong tidal movements in the area. Up next, Waterfall Reef. We arrived a few hours after the top of the tide to see the water rushing off the reef. It's pretty self-explanatory on why it's called Waterfall Reef. During the 30 minutes that we idled around, you could see the noticeable increase on how much the reef was sticking out. After an impressive two hours out on the water, it was time to head back to land. Transferred back onto the sea legs and got dropped back up at reception. We drove back to camp to soak up the beautiful weather while slowly packing up. Gumbinen, you've been great, but it's time to continue on. Join us next time as we continue to explore Cape Levique and find some more epic campsites. Love our videos? Why not help support the production on Patreon? Also, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. Cheers, legends.